Hi, so we've talked about constant rate of change before and in this video we'll talk about average rate of change. When a function is linear, we say that the rate of change is constant. When the function is nonlinear, we say that the rate of change is not constant. Um, in reality, we know that it's not realistic to travel at a constant speed all the time because there's different speed limits and we need to slow down at roundabouts or stop at red lights. Uh, so in real life, your journey will probably look more like this blue curved line instead of a straight line. Okay, we know how to find the average speed for a linear function already. So if you know two points on this line using y2 minus y1 or the x2 minus x1, it'll give you the gradient, which is the average speed. But what about a curve? When we have a curved line, different time intervals will have different average speed. In other words, different intervals will have different gradient. But we can always find two points and draw a line that passes through both points. In this question, uh, if we want to find the average speed between A and B, I know the coordinates of A and B. Using y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, I can still find a gradient. And I can say that this gradient, this number, is the average speed between point A and B. So although we have a varying speed, um, but as long as you have two points, you know two points, you draw a line passes through those two points, you can always find the gradient. So here's the general formula. So average speed is equal to total distance traveled over total time taken. This is essentially the difference in d values over the difference in t values, which is uh, what you normally do with your x and y values. So y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. This is your gradient. In this case, our x values becomes time and y value becomes distance. So that's why, um, so they're essentially the same thing. So total distance traveled refers to rise and total time taken refers to run. If you look at the graph on the right, uh, we know this point P has coordinates A and um, D1, let's just call it D1, and point Q has coordinate B and D2. To find the average speed between point P and Q, it's going to be D2 minus D1 over B minus A. All right, so that's just the general formula. Uh, we'll look at some specific questions now. Here's an easy question. We know a curve and we also know two points on this curve. To draw a straight line that connects these two points, P and Q, we, we're given the two coordinates. So that's really quite easy. The interval is from x1 is equal to 1 to x2 equal to 2. The gradient is rise over run, so it'll be 4 y2 minus 1 y1 over x2 minus x1, which is equal to 3. So here's an example. The graph of distance traveled in meters against time in seconds uh, for the motion of an object is shown. Find the average speed of this object in meters per second over the interval from t uh, from 2 to 12. Right, so horizontal axis we have time, so when t is 2 and when t is 12, the corresponding distance traveled when t is 2 is 12 and when t is 12 the corresponding distance is 30. We know the two ordered pairs, A and B. Using the same formula, average speed is essentially the gradient of the line that passes through these two points. Total distance traveled is equal to y2 minus y1, which is 30 minus 12. Total time taken is x2 minus x1, which is 12 minus 2. Average speed turns out to be 18 over 10, which is 1.8 meters per second. So on average, this particle, um, is that a particle or a car? Distance traveled of an object. So on average, um, this object is traveling at this rate. So here are two terms you need to remember. So second is a straight line here, this purple line, and chord is this um, interval right there. Keep in mind that second is a line, so a second line passes through two points. 
whereas a chord is a line segment, so it's an interval. And a chord, you can say that a chord is a section of a second line. So make sure you know how to differentiate between a second and a chord. We can then derive this formula, average rate of change is equal to change in y over change in x, which can also be written as f of b minus f of a over b minus a. Um, so what's f of a? If we define this function to be y is equal to f of x, to find the corresponding y value, we're going to sub in x is equal to a. When x is equal to a, okay, um, the corresponding y value becomes f of a. What about the corresponding y value when x is b? When x is equal to b, the corresponding y value is f of b. So that's where the two coordinates came from. And this is actually the same as y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, which is the gradient of the line. And here we ask a question. Y, sometimes we use y to define a function, and sometimes we use f of x. And you might have noticed as well that we use y and f of x interchangeably. Um, but why do we do that? So think about the plane. We have the horizontal axis being x and the vertical axis being y. If I want to label a coordinate, it'll be x value first and y value next. So y, if I just write y, y can simply be um, the height of a point in the plane, whereas f of x is the output of a function. So think back to the number machine question. Um, if we have a number machine, we have some inputs and some outputs. So let's say if I plug in a number one, when x is equal to one, my output becomes two times one, which is two. So when the input is equal to one, my output becomes two. If I plug in the number two, two times two equals four, my output becomes four. So my ordered pair now becomes two and four. And we can do, so we can choose many other values for inputs to generate the corresponding outputs. So as you can see, y can simply be the height of a point in the plane, whereas f of x is the output of a function. So that's the difference between y and f of x. So question seven, find the average rate of change of the function with rule um, this as x changes from one to five. The question clearly says we're changing the x values, therefore one and five will be x1 and x2 values. To find average rate of change, we know the formula is change in y over change in x. Here, our function is defined by uh, this. So to find the corresponding y values when x is equal to 1, we're going to plug in x is equal to 1. So when x is equal to 1, every time when you see x in this function, you're going to replace it with 1. So it becomes 1 squared minus 2 times 1 plus 5, which equals 4. So 4 is the corresponding y value when x is equal to 1. So when x is equal to 5, we're going to sub in 5 into the equation and find the corresponding y value, which is 20. So now we have our two ordered pairs. The first pair is 1, 4. The second pair is 5, 20. Then using this formula, rise over run, change in y values, 20 minus 4, over changing x values, 5 minus 1, which is 4. All right, question 8. Find the average rate of change of the function depicted in the graph for the interval at negative 2 and 5. Okay, so interval implies this is our domain. And also, we never use square brackets around coordinates. So negative 2, 5, these are the two x values. When x1 is negative 2 and x2 is 5, what's the corresponding y1 and y2 values? So this question is very nice because they, they give us the two points, negative 2, 4 and 5, 20. So we can just plug these two points into the formula to find the gradient or um, the average rate of change. Changing y is 20 minus 4 over changing x, 5 minus negative 2. Be very careful, we're dealing with negative signs here. So when we're taking away a negative number, minus minus becomes plus. So this is equal to 20 minus 4 over 5 plus 2, which is um, 16 over 7. All right. So we can say that the average rate of change 
for the interval negative 2 and 5 is 16 over 7. Okay, last example. The air temperature T degrees Celsius at a weather station on a particular evening is modelled by this equation. Where T is, so a little t is the time in hours after 6 p.m. Question A, we want to find the temperature at 6 p.m. So 6 p.m. means um, that's the time that we started to measure the temperature. So at 6 p.m. a t is equal to zero. That's our initial, uh, initial time. So if we want to find the temperature at 6 p.m., we are tr we're taking little t to be zero. All right, that's our initial, initial time. So when little t is zero, we're going to sub this into our equation to find big T. Every time when you see little t in this equation, you're going to replace it with zero. So we have 600 over zero squared plus two times zero plus 30. This is equal to 20 degrees Celsius. So this is our y1 value. In other words, when little t is zero, okay, um, the temperature is 20 degrees Celsius. So at 6 p.m., the temperature is 20 degrees. Question B, find the temperature at midnight. Midnight is 12 a.m. And from 6 p.m. to 12 a.m., we know that six hours have gone by. So we're taking little t to be six in this second question. So subbing little t equals six to find the big T. Every time when you say little t, you're going to replace it with six. And you found uh, the temperature is 7.69 degree. So this is our y2 value. Now you can write that. So after six hours, um, at midnight, the temperature is 7.69 degrees Celsius. Question C says, find the average rate of change of the air temperature from 6 p.m. until midnight. Now, let, let me write the two ordered pairs um, again. So the, the first ordered pair is 0, 20, and the second ordered pair is 6 and 7.69. So these are the two ordered pairs. To find the average rate of change, we're going to find the difference in temperature over difference in time. So 7.69 minus 20 over 6 minus 0. This is equal to negative 2.05 degrees Celsius per hour. So the average rate of change is a negative number. This means that the temperature is going down as the night progresses. So here's the summary. The line which passes through two points on a curve is called a second. So this blue line is the second line. The line segment joining two points on a curve is called a chord. So chord is essentially this section right here between point A and B. And for a function y is equal to f of x, the average rate of change of y with respect to x over the interval a and b is the gradient of the second line through these two coordinates. So we've talked about this before. When x is a, the corresponding y value is f of a. And when x is b, the corresponding y value is f of b. Then um, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 It'll give you the gradient, which is uh, the average rate of change. Hope you find this video helpful and hope to see you in the next video. Bye.